So in your real life Django projects, you'll often write hundreds if not thousands of tests for the project. And of course this is very important, tests help to prevent bugs in the application, they prevent regressions when other developers are changing code as well, and it's just good for the sanity of the developer. But one thing you might not want to do is run the entire test suite of thousands of test methods when you run the manage.py test command. We're going to introduce tags in this video, which is a mechanism for preventing this by allowing you to tag individual methods or indeed classes. And you can then pass those tags to the manage.py test command in order to only run that subset of the test suite. Now I've got the documentation open here and the django.test module provides a tag object. We're going to look at that in this video. Now before we get started, if you want to learn a lot about Django and Python testing, I did a series for the Net Ninja YouTube channel, which is an amazing channel for web development. And this is the series here, it's called Testing in Django, and there's a new video being released every day. And in this series we're covering key concepts such as Python's unit test module, and also testing models, views, authentication, forms, and other key Django components. This series will show you how to test all of those, and we'll also dive into more advanced concepts like mocking in Python, test performance optimization, and we'll look at coverage.py for test coverage. So this is completely free on YouTube on the Net Ninja channel. I'll leave a link to the playlist just below the video. So let's get started and look at tags in Django. I have a project open in VS Code here, and what we're going to do is take a very quick look at this project. Now there are two views here, one's called index and it just renders a template and we also have a payments view here and what that does is it takes the request.user which is an authenticated user because we have the login required decorator and it finds all of the user payments and then it renders a template called payments.html. Now if we look at models.py what we have here is a payment model that's tied to the user and that payment tracks the amount and also has the date created. Now that's a simple setup, what I want to do is write tests for these two views here. Now the first one is going to make sure that any user, whether they are authenticated or not, can access the index view. And then we're going to add a second test here for the payments view. And that's going to ensure that if you're not authenticated, you're redirected to a login page. And it will also check that for authenticated users, they can access this and they get their own payments. So let's go to tests.py and what we're going to do here is we're going to define this view tests. Now normally I would split each view into its own test class, but in this case I'm just going to keep everything inside the single subclass of Django's test case. Now actually before we start writing any code, let's go over some examples here of why you might want to use tags. Now first of all, tags can allow you to categorize your tests. For example, you could tag the tests as being unit tests or integration or end to end and so on. And these tags might allow you to only apply the end to end tests when you run the test suite or you could apply any of the other subsets or you could exclude a particular set of tests as we'll see later in the video. You can also use tags to mark tests that are very slow or resource intensive and that will allow you to exclude those when you run the test suite very easily. And you can also define tags for specific environments, for example, if a test should only run in a production setting. And finally, the big benefit of doing this, of segregating your tests, is that you can easily include or exclude tests during the runs of your test suite. And by cutting down the number of tests that are being run, you can improve performance and that's going to save you time when you're waiting for the test suite to complete. Now let's get on to the code. We're going to define a setup method here. And the setup method is explained in that Net Ninja series. But basically this method is going to allow you to perform some setup for all of the other methods that are going to be defined in this class. Now we're going to import the client from Django.test and let's store self.client as part of the setup method. So we're going to instantiate the Django test client and store it in the class. And for testing these authentication scenarios, we're going to import the Django user model, which is what we're using in this basic application. And then I'm going to create a test user here by using user.objects.createUser. So we have our user and then what we're going to do, because we have a payments model, we're going to create some payments and tie it to that user using this foreign key here. So let's go back to tests.py and I'm just going to create two payments. So I'm going to paste these in here and you can see these payments. We also need to import the payment model at the top. So that will be from code.models, we're going to import payment. So in the setup method here, what we're doing is we're defining a user and we're also creating two payments in the database and we're tying those payments to the user. And each payment has a given amount. Now once we've defined the setup, we can write some tests. So what I'm going to do is bring in another import here from Django and that's the reverse function. So if I go to urls.py in this project, we have two URLs here that link to the two views that we saw. One is called index and that requires no authentication. Whereas the payments view, that is the one we want to test and make sure that it behaves as expected 
when we are not authenticated as well as when we actually are authenticated. So let's go back to tests.py and we're going to start simple with the index view here. So I'm going to write a function here and typically test functions can be quite verbose. This one's called test index view is public. And what we're going to do here is we're going to create a response by using the Django test client. Remember we stored that as self.client and we're going to use the .get method to send a get request and then we can reverse that index view here. That's going to send a get request to the index view and give us back this response. Now we want to test that the response.status code is equal to 200. So we're going to use self.assert equal and that's an assertion method on Django test case classes. And again, for more information on that, check out the Net Ninja course. We're going to check response.status code is equal to 200. So that's a very simple test, but we can run that at the bottom with python manage.py test. And it's going to pick up that single test here and you can see that that has passed. All is good when the tests have passed. So the public view is very simple. We can now write a second test and that's going to be for the payments page. Now remember this page requires authentication and we're going to call this test payments view redirects when unauthenticated. So let's do this now. We're going to create a response and again I'm going to copy this line of code here but we're going to change what's in the reverse function to that payments. So this URL here will give the user the payments that they have in the application and it may actually be useful to see this. So at the bottom I'm going to start the Django server and we're going to go to this application. So here we have the simple index page and then we have a link to the payments page if the user is authenticated and you can see this user has three payments. So we're going to go back to VS Code and we're going to write the test here. So basically when the user is not authenticated, this response should not show what you just saw here because I'm logged into this application. What it should do instead is redirect the user to the login page. And that's because we've not done any kind of authentication here in this Django test. So the response should redirect to the login page. So I'm going to add a comment here for that. We're going to redirect to the login page. So what I'm going to do is set up another assert equal statement. And we're going to assert this time that the response.status code is equal to 302. And that response status code indicates that we have a redirect to another location. And let's add a second assertion here. I'm going to use assert true this time. And I'm going to assert that accounts slash login is in response.url. So basically response.url is going to be the URL that we are redirected to. And we expect to see this in that URL because that's the default login URL in Django. And I've not changed that in this application. So let's stop the server at the bottom, clear the terminal and we can rerun manage.py test. And this time we have two tests and now they are both passing. I want to write one final test and that's that the payments view works when the user is authenticated. And we're going to see how we can actually authenticate a user in a Django test method when we write this next function. So let's go to the line below and this one's called test payments view with authenticated user. And what we can do in order to authenticate the user is access the Django test client and notice that that has a method called login. And all we need to do is pass the credentials to the login method. And I'm going to pass the same credentials as the user that we defined up here in the setup method. So we have that user now and what we can do with this user is we can actually send the same request as we did above to the payments URL, but now we are authenticated. So when we do that, the response is not going to redirect us as we saw above, but instead we expect response.status code to equal 200. So I'm going to add that here. And if we look at views.py, there are different assertions we could make here. For example, the context has the user payments in a key called payments. So we can check that using another method. So I'm going to use self.assert in, and we can pass to that any kind of container, for example, a dictionary or a list in Python. So the member is going to be called payments because that was the key in the context dictionary. And we can access that in this response by using response.context. That's a property on the response. So we're checking here that the payments are present in the response.context for the authenticated user. And we could also verify, for example, that the correct payments are in the context. So to do that, let's access response.context and we're going to get that key of payments and that allows us to bring them out into the variable of payments. And we're going to check that there's two of these. So we're going to use assert equal and we're going to use the len function and make sure that we have two payments and no more than two payments in that context. That's important because we don't want to, for example, mistakenly fetch payments that don't belong to the user that's logged in. So we want to make sure we only have two of these. You could also iterate over these payments and make sure that the payments.user foreign key points to the user that we have logged in here, but I'm going to skip that for now. So let's save this and again, run these tests on the terminal. So manage.py test, 
This time it's going to pick up three tests and we can see that all of them have passed. Okay, this is brilliant, but we haven't done anything with tags here. So I'm going to introduce a somewhat contrived example just to demonstrate the usage of these tags. So what I'm going to do at the top is import the tag decorator from the Django.test module. And what we can do is we can decorate either the class itself, which is going to apply the tag to all methods within the class, or we can apply the tag decorator to the test methods themselves. So let's say we wanted to mark some of the tests as being slow and some of the tests as being fast. What we could do here is we could take, for example, this here and decorate it with the tag decorator. And this test method simply sends a GET request and makes sure the response has a particular status code. There's no complex processing, so we might want to tag that as being fast. And I'm going to copy that and bring that down to the second one, which asserts that we get a redirect when the user is not authenticated. And then the final one, let's just assume that we're performing some more complex processing here. I'm going to tag that with the slow tag. So now we have two tags. One is fast and the other is slow. And two of the test methods have the fast tag and only one of them has this slow tag. Now I want to just mention something here. Why might this be slow? I don't think it's actually going to be that slow, but one thing that does take a bit of processing in your tests is when you use these login methods. And the reason for that is because Django is going to hash this password and check it against the database. And that hashing process can be quite expensive, and that's by design. It's to try and deter attackers who are trying to guess users' passwords. So one thing you can do if you want to speed up tests like this that use authentication, if we go to the Django documentation, we have a section here on speeding up the tests. And there are various methods for this, and we go into detail about this in the NetNinja course. One of them is password hashing, so the default password hasher is slow by design. But what you can do in your tests is define a custom settings file for the tests, and then reset the password hashers to a much faster hashing algorithm, for example, MD5. Now, MD5 is not suitable for production, but you can use this very safely in your tests. So that's one way you might speed up the tests, but we're just tagging this with the slow tag for this video. So let's now save this file and go back to the terminal. And what we can do is bring back the test command. And in order to run with tags, we just pass the dash dash tag option here. And if we wanted to only run the fast tests, we can pass that tag into this command. And you can see that it's only found two out of three tests and it runs both of these. If we bring back that command and we set the tag to slow, it's only gonna find that one test that's tagged with slow. So this command here is how we can take the tags that we're using and only run a subset of the tests based on that tag. Now it may also be useful to run all the tests except the ones that are tagged as slow. So we can clear the terminal here and I'm gonna bring back that command. What we can do instead of running tag equals show is we can use the exclude tag option and that's going to exclude any tests that are tagged with slow. And you can imagine that being very useful because we want to sometimes skip the tests that are gonna take a long time. So in that case, we use exclude tag instead of tag. Now we can also add multiple tags. So if I go back here, this test method and the one below are the ones that are performing tests on an authenticated view. What we can do is add a second tag and we just comma separate these. So I'm going to add an auth tag here and I'm also gonna add that to the final test that we have at the bottom. So now these two have two tags associated with them and we can go back to the terminal again. I'm going to clear this out and let's bring back the command. And what I'm gonna pass as the tag here is the auth tag and it's gonna find the two of those and run those tests. So we can apply very easily multiple tags to a test method. And we can also tag classes as well. So I'm going to go to the top here and I'm gonna remove the comment from Django. What we can do is apply the tag decorator to the class, that's called a class decorator in Python. And let's say we wanted to tag this with views. So you might be testing different parts of your application. This one tests views, but you might be testing models and other components. In that case, we tag the entire class with views and that applies that tag to all of the three test methods that we have in that class. Let's test this out on the terminal. I'm gonna clear this out. And if we pass views in here, you can see it's gonna find all three of those tests and run them in this command. Now I'm gonna minimize the terminal and go to the very top here. And just as a demonstration, I'm going to define a dummy test class. And we're tagging the two methods here with dummy. Now if we save this and go back to the terminal and just run python manage.py test, it's going to find five tests. So now we have five tests in the entire project. But if we bring back the test with the tag of views, it's only going to find those three. And we can also apply the tag of dummy here. So I'm gonna bring this command back and replace views with dummy. We define two methods in that class and it finds both of these. So you can see how simple it is to tag all of the methods in a class just by applying the decorator to the class itself. 
and notice that you can mix and match this approach. So for example, here we have a class decorator that is applied to all test methods, but we also have some individual tags like this one here, and that's applied on the method level. So that's appended to the tags that are added by the class decorator. Now, the final thing I want to show is that we can use multiple tags in the command. So let's bring back the dummy tag here. And when we ran that, what happened was we found the two tests. But what we're going to do is apply a second tag here. And all we need to do is add multiple dash dash tag options to the command. So for example, dummy and auth. If we wanted to run one of the tests that have either one of those tags, we can add both of the tags into the command. Let's run this and it's going to find four tests. Why is that? Because the dummy decorator is applied to the class. It finds these two methods. And if we go to view tests, there are two of these test methods that have the auth tag. So if you want to run manage.py test and supply multiple tags, it's very easy to do that as well. And this gives you control over the subset of the test suite that you're actually going to run each time you run the command. And it can help you prevent running that entire test suite that might take 20 minutes, could take longer, it could take less time, of course, but depending on the complexity of your application and the tests and also the number of test cases that you have. Tags are a nice way to provide more granular control over the tests that are run. Now, I just want to finish the video by noting that this is also available in PyTest. And these are referred to as custom markers in PyTest. And if we go to the code example here, what we use is the PyTest.mark decorator. So you can give the PyTest functions some marks. For example, this one has a mark of web test. And this one has a mark of device with a given serial number. And then what you can do is you can run the PyTest command. And if you pass dash M followed by a marker, it's only going to run the tests that are associated with that marker. And just like Django's exclude tag, if we go below here, we also have the option of running all tests except the ones that have a given marker. And all we need to do for that is pass dash M as before to the PyTest command. But instead of the marker, we are passing not web test here. And that's going to run all tests except the ones that are marked with web test. So all of this functionality of tagging is also available in PyTest. And we will do a PyTest series at some point on this channel. But that is going to be all for this video for now. If you want to learn much more about testing in Django, check out this course that we've done for the Net Ninja that I mentioned at the start of the video. We've got a link in the description and in the pinned comment. There's going to be new videos dropping every day on that course. And if you want to support the channel, check out this coffee page that we have also linked in the description. Thanks very much to everyone who's contributed to this coffee and it's going to help keep this content free on YouTube. Thanks again for watching guys and we'll see you in the next video.